won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't be there. Cause I got a serve knows only how to triumph. Come on. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yeah, I'm going to see a victory. Cause I got a serve knows only how to triumph. Come on. Come on, church. Yes, I know I will God never fail. Oh 
victory right now, God, but in the spirit we've already won, Lord God, and your angels go before us and they make a way, Father God. We worship you, Lord. Let's give God glory this evening. Let's give him praise. Come on, worship him in your own way. Give him glory. Give him praise for he is worthy. God, we thank you, God. We stand in victory right now, God, and we worship you, Lord. We give you praise, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Fill us up with more of your spirit, Father God. We come we hunger for you, God. We're here for you, God. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. And here in your love.
God, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you, God. Cause I want more of you, God. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. And here in your love, here in your love, there's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. And here in your love, here in your love, there's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. Here in your love, here in your love, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. So I want more of you, God. So I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. So I want more.
those watching by Facebook, Lord, I'm just asking that tonight, Lord, that you would just fill every heart, God. Lord, minister to every need according to your will. Lord, tonight, let us just continue to take in the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of God. 
Lord, I just pray, Lord, as tonight, let us see you as the way maker. Father, let us be as the children, God. Lord, a childlike faith. Lord, they love this song. And when they sing this song, Lord, they sing it from, Lord, to the top of their lungs. Because, Lord, they really believe you to be a miracle worker. Father, even in my faith, help my unbelief tonight. Father, in my weakness, you are made strong. And, Father, in my shortcomings, I ask your forgiveness. Father, I pray that each and every day, Lord, that I would, Lord, walk with wisdom and knowledge and obedience to the Word of God. Lord, that people will see you in my life, God, that they won't see me. And, Father, when I fall short, Lord, whether with an attitude, with, Father, whether with just letting life get to me at times, God. Father, I thank you that you are a way maker. The Lord, you can take that and you can work it for my good. The Lord, I don't have to settle for that, God. And though I'm guilty, you made me innocent through the blood of Jesus Christ. So, Father, let me find my place in you. Let every person tonight find their place in you tonight, God, that we would take up our cross and follow you, but we would not deny the word, but we would take it upon our own selves and apply it to our lives, God. Don't let us cast this off to the person beside us. Don't let us just, Lord, brush it off, but God, let us all take this word to heart. The Lord, you are an awesome God, and we love you tonight. Father, we thank you for it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, we're going to go ahead and receive tonight's tithes and offering. If you would, go to page 130 and you read back. It should be, I never shall forget the day, if I remember correctly. Amen. And uh, so as the ushers come forth tonight, uh, before we get ready to uh, preach the word, just obey God and your giving tonight. Amen. It should be a key of C, G. Usually it's C, but they're going with the Church of God G. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But either way, let's just, how many of you is grateful for that day that Jesus saved your soul? Amen. Amen. Father, we pray that you take this offering, bless it, Lord, multiply it to meet the needs of this church, God, that we can meet the needs of the community and the people around us, God. And let us, Lord, just be obedient in you, in Jesus' name. Amen.
If you got your Bibles, turn with me tonight to Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, Brother Aaron, if you can throw it up there right fast, I apologize. I didn't get to get with you. Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to read verses 25 through 29. And uh, again, the reason I like going to put it on the screen is um, I'll be reading from a different translation. Um, and so, but I, I like to still have the, uh, again, it's, it's just a personal thing. I like the King James. I like for it to be up here, but um, that's just me. Verse 25 says, See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, I pray for the next few minutes you would anoint me with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Father, Lord, hide me behind the cross. Lord, let me not say not one word that is not of, of you, Lord. Let everything that is spoken be led by your spirit, Father, as, Lord, we just give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we go back and we look at this, and uh, I want to just continue to talk to you tonight as we've been uh, talking about uh, the the uh, just the firmness of where God wants the church, amen. And tonight I want to talk about the unshakable because I believe with all my heart that God is setting up a remnant that is unshakable, that it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at them, they refuse to allow the enemy to take them off of the th of throne that God has placed them on or, or the, you know, the different levels. And, and this is the hour that we need to just bind together more than ever and just become that unshakable kingdom that God has called us to be. I begin to think, uh, I hope Sister Robin don't mind, I want to uh, talk for a little bit about little Brantley. I was asking her how things went the other day, and she was telling me. And, and you know, I, I begin to think about how we was talking the other night and, and the faith that this young man has. And I was thinking and I was praying, and, 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 and even as we were singing, I was just, uh, uh, just meditating on some things we talked about. And I really believe, as I have been uh, trying to say from, from really from day one, one of the reasons that I felt like God gave me the scriptures that he did, that we would be that bridge, is because God needs a remnant of people that though it's not what they desire, they're willing to stand in the gap, allow the Lord to be the, the, the God in their life so that we can be the tangible bridge between God and man at this point. Not, the, not putting us at a place of Christ. I'm talking about Christ through us. It ain't nothing within our abilities. And I begin to think about him. And I begin to think about, we was talking, I was telling her that I had invited some people to uh, uh, the, the, uh, one of their, they're going to do a fundraiser. And I think it's going to, uh, uh, there'll be uh, people um, of all different uh, types of lifestyles that will be there. And 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 uh, you know, I know that a lot of times I get tickled because people when when I when we go out and sometimes we go on these motorcycle rides, you know, uh, the first thing people will say is, uh, you know, now uh, now I I can't help how everybody else acts. I said, look, you don't have to say nothing because I'm not the judge. Amen. God is the judge. All I'm supposed to do is love them. Amen. And I can. Sh and it's time that we show the world that we are not so weak that we can't be in their presence. Amen. That we're going to fall off the horse every time we get in their presence. But we need to show them that our God is an everlasting God. Amen. He is a God. He is a consuming fire. That it is fire shut up in our bones. And we need to be that bridge to the world and let them know that, hey, you know what? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And you don't have to leave here like you came no matter where we're at. And that's where I, I want to talk to you tonight from is, is becoming the unshakable church that God wants us to be he is calling us into a depth that that I believe with all my heart that not everybody is going into because as we talk about sadly there's a lot of places that are not welcoming the spirit of God but 
Uh, but without God, we are nothing, church. We need to establish that. And I know that I say that a lot, but you don't understand how sincere I am when I tell you it has to be about Jesus. If it ain't about Jesus, then we have missed the mark. We need to close these doors because we're going to stand before God and we're going to be judged according to the word of God, not according to the pastor's opinion, not according to anything other than the word of God. And that's why I try to teach and preach the word of God. And again, and that's why I also tell you, go home, study the word, make sure that what I'm saying is biblical, because if, if it's not, you need to let me know. Amen. Uh, and so I said all that to say this. God is wanting to use us to build a bridge between man and and God, uh, like I said, Jesus is the ultimate bridge, but he wants us to be that that physical appearance because, you know, it even as a Christian, you know, as much as we walk by faith and not by sight, and we know that that's our lifestyle, that's everything about us. If you're a child of God, everything about you has to be about faith because we, we can't see. The Bible says, you know, if you could see it, then it would be easy to believe it. Amen. But he's taught, he said, but blessed are those that that don't see and still believe and and that's where we're at today. So as we go into this, I just uh, begin to think about that. And I just want to say uh, before the church and to Sister Rob, I'm telling you, that little man's going to be a mighty man of God. I'm telling you, the anointing that is flowing. And I'm telling you, he's going to be able to touch hearts and see. Because we look so many times at the natural. We, You know, I, I look back at Zach's life and I think about, you know, uh, all the, and I've said it many a times. You know, I had that pity party one time where I told God, you know, I, I'm not going to go into all that. But I was like, woe is me, God. I, I wanted to be a good daddy. I wanted to play ball, teach him how to play ball and teach him, you know, all the stuff uh, that a father and son would do and, and, and take him fishing and all these things. And and so uh, and, and I was feeling sorry. I said, Lord, I didn't get to teach him none of these things. And God just stopped me and, and right in my spirit. He said he has taught you more about life than you ever could have. And it was so true because God, had, through Zach, had taught me unconditional love. There's no way that I would have, uh, Sister Dana and I would have the love that we have uh, without Zach. God used Zach as a bridge. And when th when his purpose was accomplished, when his time was up, God uh, took him. And, and like I said, see, we forget God lends us our loved ones. You know, he's the one. He loves us even more than, than we love each other. I know that you love your babies. I know that you love your husband and wife. But even as much as you love love them god loves them 10 times more you say i don't know about that he sent his only son to die on the cross for you when you was yet a sinner if that ain't love i'm telling you what i don't know what is so so i said that to to say tonight the and i'm building a foundation for us to understand that what god is trying to do because we're going to go through some stuff, church. We're going through it now. Some of you, some of us are going to go through it individually. Some of us are going to go through it. Uh, I mean, we're just going to go through different. We're going to go through things as a group. We're going to go through things as a church. We're going to go through things. And the reason I want to establish that tonight is because for some reason, we still are knocked off the horse and the wind is knocked out of us every time we get sideswiped by the enemy, which by now we should be accustomed to know that the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy but God came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly and therefore whatever is attacking us and therefore whatever is coming to us and through us if it is building up then it is of God if it's tearing down it's not of God amen and, and again I like I said I'm preaching to me tonight because I'm telling you uh, uh, the the uh, I still barely have moments of members of Sunday night uh, bits and pieces are come back to me and, you know, that's that's just a scary thing when, when you can't remember what's going on. And and uh, but anyway, but even in that, I know God has a plan. He has a purpose. And, and, and I thank the individual for the word of confirmation that they give, because, like I said, it's easy to get caught up in this flesh and begin to, you know, start saying, OK, Lord, now what's going on? Am I really losing my mind? You know, and, and, and that's what the enemy wants us to think. And I'm going to be honest with you, God even rebuked me a while ago as I was sitting there because I was like, you know, I, I've, been, I've been praying. I said, Lord, you know, I just feel like I'm losing my mind. He said, quit speaking it. I'm just going to be honest because I'm the world's worst to say, man, I'm just losing my mind. I'm, I got where I'm so forgetful. And I repeat it so much. And, 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 and it's like God just spoke to me a while ago while I was praying. And like I said, I mean, God's still speaking to me and correcting me. He said, quit speaking it. 
because you have the power to speak life and death, blessings or curses, and the kingdom from which we are a part of is not of this world, and its laws do not line up with the laws of this world, and we got to start getting out of the law of man into the law of God and begin to realize that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us, that we have a power and anointing, that we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover, that we can begin to call those things which are not as though they were, that we can begin begin to be the redeemed of the Lord. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. We haven't said so in a long time. Can you say so tonight? Amen. Uh, so we are redeemed tonight and we are redeemed not by uh, flesh, but because, but by the blood of the lamb, we are redeemed tonight, not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. So what I'm saying, I, I don't know about you, but I, I just feel it in my spirit. There is a stirring and God is trying to encourage you and remind you tonight that you are of an unshakable kingdom that is not uh, you are made of a kingdom and a mansion is not built by hands but it is made by an unseen hand amen and God is still on the throne and in spite of how we believe you can believe in him or you cannot believe in him he's still going to be God amen it's not going to change the fact that he is and he has rewarded them that diligently seek him and it's us that's got to get back to a place and into a mindset and understanding that God is not of this world and therefore he does not operate as of this world and we've got to quit looking for things and trying to figure things out and trying to put them the way we want them but we got to start putting them the way God wants them and that means sometimes we got to step out on faith amen that means sometimes we got even though we don't see nothing to step on we got to step anyway amen sometimes we just got to keep moving and not let the enemy stop us so so tonight let's build that bridge and let the spirit of God get inside of you and begin to transform you because He's taking you through your situation so that you will be a bridge between man and God so that man can look at you and your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. I'm telling you, I'm preaching the word tonight. This is not my opinion. I'm telling you, everything that I'm saying is of the word. And the Bible said, you know what? The, he said, the best is yet to come. We have not even begun to entertain what the, uh, awaits us. It is us that separates us from God. It is us that separates us from the miracles. It is us that separates us from, from everything that God God has in store from us but God has a plan he says I would that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers tonight amen so where does your soul lie tonight are you searching or are you always casting it on everybody else are you saying Lord search me and woe is me for I'm a man of unclean lips I'm talking about if these are mighty men of God that quoted these words I'm talking about men that gave their very life for the cause of the sake of the gospel and who are we to sit here and whine and complain about our little problems when these these men were beat and stoned. I began to think about Stephen. I'm telling you, if that ain't unshakable faith, here he is being stoned by a man. And I'm getting ahead of myself, but I can't help it. But he's being stoned by a man. And I'm telling you, you're talking about an unshakable faith. He said, Father, even while they are casting the stones, can you imagine uh, uh, looking at people that are doing harm to you, hitting you with these? And I'm not talking about little pellets. I'm talking about they were stoning him to death. They were literally throwing rocks upon him, and they were stoning him to the point of death. And I'm telling you, we get offended when somebody just says something about us. Amen? And, and we have not had a stone cast at our head. But God is saying, he said, look at Stephen. Stephen had an un unshakable faith and it wasn't him but it was the unshakable kingdom that he was a part of he said Lord lay this not at their account why does that why would a man say it's such a nonsense in a time that they are beating him I'm telling you why because he realized he was not a kingdom of this world but he realized he was a part of another kingdom and he was not looking at the temporal kingdom but he was looking at the eternal kingdom and he was saying Lord he said this is be all right this pain will be over in a little bit but there their souls are going to last eternity so lord he said their souls are more important to me than the pain that i'm in i'm telling you god wants you to get to a place where man's soul is more important to you than the temporary pain that you're in that he wants to, you to begin to see that you are a part of a kingdom that is not made by hands amen that you are part of an unshakable kingdom amen now let's go to the word of god amen and we'll try to get started. Verse 25, it says, see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if those did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape who turn away him from him who warns from heaven. 
And what he's talking about, he's talking about the danger of putting off till tomorrow. And I want to tell you about, he's talking about salvation, but salvation covers more than forgiveness. He's talking about all that stress that you're under. Amen. He's talking about lay it at my feet. Amen. Because that's not part of the unshakable kingdom. He said, because my kingdom is made up of peace and joy that's unshakable and full of glory. He said, I, a peace that surpasses all understanding. He said, because my kingdom is unshakable. It doesn't matter what you're going through, but you are part of an unshakable kingdom but he's saying he said if they did not flee from the warning when i was with them uh, uh, face to face he said how much more will we through the spirit will we reject what he is trying to place on us and can i be honest with you the bible tells us not to uh, grieve the holy spirit and i know a lot of times we we use that scripture a lot of times to and and, and i'm sure it's used in that way uh, but we use it in, in an act of whether we obeyed or not, you know, uh, to quench the spirit. We, you know, we use that in the manner of, well, I felt like I should have done something tonight. And, and I felt like I sit back, I quench the spirit. And, and that is a part of it. But, you know, every time that God tries to put joy inside of you and you reject it and keep your sadness, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. Do you know every time God is trying to give you peace that surpasses all understanding, but you choose to keep to turmoil and strife up here? He's saying uh, he's saying that you are grieving the Holy Spirit every time the Lord is trying to come and redeem you and you reject him you are grieving the Holy Spirit it's more than salvation salvation is more than just forgiveness but he said it is by his stripes it was placed in that same salvation amen it's by his stripes we are healed and he said he's the same yesterday to today and forever he changes not church it is not God that has been changed it is us he is unshakable the kingdom is unshakable it will not be moved God is not moved by the term more that this world is in matter of fact the earth is groaning and moaning on 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 behalf of, of, of everything that's going on even the earth is mourning uh, of the sin and the corruption that is taking place but god said i've got a remnant that still has not bowed to Baal. amen i've got a remnant that still is not giving into the ways of man that even though they want to to do things their way they're rebuking that they're walking in the understanding why because we understand that now is the time the bible said today is the day of salvation he said that we must do it because it is high time to awake church we need to awaken out of sleep and, and i tell people all the time one of the one of the most uh quoted um i guess you say it's not a scripture just uh, it's just what people use but one of the most uh despised sayings that i cannot stand to hear people say is we're just human I cannot stand that or nobody's perfect. It just makes my skin crawl. When, and I've said it before, amen, uh, uh, even more lately than, than b before. And I said, Lord, Lord, I'm turning into people that I used to rebuke, amen. What is wrong with me, amen? And so I had to rebuke myself. But we use that too often as an escape goat. When God said, I am an un unshakable God, I can do unshakable things, and I can put you in a place, I can put you on a mountain, and I can cause you to stand, I can put you in the valley and it be a, a trembling all the ground be all turmoil up under you but you can still be standing on firm foundation because you're standing on the word of God and not on anything else church we've got to stand on the promises of God we have a truth that the world doesn't have and yet we're the ones that are hitting the panic button we're the ones that that are, are, are fighting we're the ones that are that, that are falling apart we're the one when God is saying you have the answer give it to him he said because the time is coming when we cannot work anymore we're going to be judged for every out of word that we speak we're not going to be judged for the works that we do from nine to five we're going to be judged on the works that we do in the spirit and church we need to wake up we need to wake up and we need to understand because he's saying he said see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking and what's he saying he's saying sound the trumpet because he tells us in his word, he said uh, that the uh, harvest truly is plenteous, but the labor is a few. What is the Lord speaking? He's speaking that, you know, that we got to work now, that we've got to love unconditionally. What is he saying? Every, all of it's right here. You say, well, he ain't said nothing. Well, you ain't read. You ain't talked to him in a while because he's speaking every single day. Not only in the word, but see, people, when I tell people that I talk to God or God talks to me, they think that I'm just sitting there carrying on a conversation, which I am, but not in the way that you think. I don't hear an audible voice, but I'm telling you, 
I, the word of God comes back to my remembrance every single time, no matter what the circle. If I'm wrong, if I'm in, the, if I'm in my flesh and, and, and having one of those moments, God takes me back to the word and he rebukes me. Amen. Why? Because he chastises those that he loves. Uh, we are in a generation that is so offended by anything that, that comes, cuts against them. But listen, they're just going to have to get offended because, you know, the Bible tells me that I have to share this love and this truth with mankind. But he said, I've got to do it all with love. That's the key, church. That's where we've been falling short. And that's why I said little Brantley's going to be so successful because that boy is full of so much of God's love. But I want to tell you something. Don't think that the devil ain't going to fight the young man. We get excited about the, the call on his life, but we forget the warfare that comes with it. And church, we need to teach him now. We need to teach this generation now that they have a God that will stand beside them and carry them through the darkest of the dark hours. And they need to understand that we serve a God that will never fail them, never leave them, nor forsake them. We need to uh, teach them that their God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that works within us. We need to teach them these things. We have fallen short in teaching our children and our loved ones the word of God. Why? Because we didn't want to push it on people. Look, you can share the word without being pushy. You can, and I'm telling you, when it comes to a place you're willing to listen as much as you're willing to talk, then people will listen to what you've got to say. But too many times we're quick to want to say, Oh, you're wrong, and this is this, and we want to just quote scripture and not give them a chance to talk. You got to let them get it, get it out. And once they hear it from their own lips, that's when they start realizing. See, as long as they keep it in here, they don't hear it. And the enemy keeps them that in bondage. But when you let them begin to speak that, then when it comes out, they hear it, and you can say, now, God loves you. And God wants to deliver you. Amen. There's so many things that God wants to do. But he's warning us. He's saying that, you know, they didn't do it. And how much more are we going to be judged for these things? Verse 26. And his voice shook the earth then. But now he, is prom he has promised saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heaven. And verse 27. This expression, yet once more, denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken as of created things so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Verse 28, therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God in a, an acceptable service with reverence and awe. Amen. Did you get that? He's saying that we should with joy, with acceptance, that we should serve God we should have an acceptable service that shows and reveals our faith in an unshakable God what God's wanting to do tonight he's wanting to build your faith he's wanting to remind you that even though you're on shaky ground you got a firm foundation if you're on the word it may not go the way you want it, but it will go the way he has planned if you will allow him to lead you. And I want to tell you something. If you will not fight it, you'll see the beauty all the way through it. But it's when we begin to fight it. That's why I tell people, as bad as it sounds, I think I'm more blunt now than I've ever been. I know that sounds scary. And I'm going to tell you why, but I do it with love now. Because I realize we don't have, we're not promised tomorrow. I got a good friend of mine. He was facing a serious situation recently. And I was talking to his helpmate. And I told him, I said, now there's going to be a lot of people right now that's going to tell you not to preach to him. Because he don't need to stress. I said, but you better rebuke that lie of the devil because now he needs to hear the truth more than ever church we have the truth 
we have an unshakable foundation, a promise from God Almighty. Verse 29, it says, I mean, He is a consuming fire. He wants it to be fire shut up in our bones. I begin to think about the three Hebrew boys. You see, they knew that unshakable kingdom because they said, King, it's not even, it's, this is not even debatable. Why are you, you know, you told us we had to bow down. We said no. You said we're going to throw you in the fire. We said okay. You said, I'm going to turn it up seven times hotter. And they said, why are we still debating this? Did we not say that our God will be done? If God wants us to burn up in that thing, we'll burn up and we're going to spend eternity with him. But if God don't want us to burn, old king, hate to break your heart, but it ain't going to happen. And we know the rest of the story. Can I tell you it's the same way with what you're facing tonight? God wants you to get to that place in your faith to where you'll stand. And you'll say, all right, devil. I see what you're throwing at me. But it ain't your choice. This is God's. The battle's not even mine. It's the Lord's. Therefore, tonight, I'm going to stand on that unshakable kingdom not made by hand. I know that tomorrow, if I don't wake up on this side of earth tomorrow, I have a kingdom that awaits. But can I tell you something? I don't have to wait till I get to heaven to experience the kingdom experience. That's why he says, when you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. We are the earth. So Jesus himself said, don't wait till you get there. Enjoy the kingdom now. Enjoy it now. We were talking the other night, and a good point was made, and, and I agree 100%. Why do we spend most of our life talking about eternity, and we never learn how to live in our temporal? And like I said, my answer was, as much as I hate to say it, until people re come to reality that there is an end, they'll never start at the beginning. Church, there is so much God wants to do for us. We have just been on defense for so long. We no longer. I'll be honest with you, we, we're just satisfied that the devil just leaves us alone. But God says, we're on the winning side. We're on the unshakable side. And what he was saying in that verse, in verse 27, he is saying those things that can be shaken, I'm going to shake and they're going to fall. Don't let your trials consume you. The God that created you and loves you and sent his son to die for you. He allows you to go through these storms not to defeat you, but to build you up and to reveal his glory. And he wants you to know tonight that you can, with assurance, lay your head down at night if you will let him. And you can have peace to know that there is an unshakable kingdom that not only awaits us eternally, that awaits us every day we wake up. So I challenge you tomorrow, wake up and remind yourself, I may be on shaky ground, but the foundation up under me is firm. I will not be denied.
Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we thank you for your word. I pray it has blessed someone. I pray it has encouraged someone. I pray it has built someone's faith tonight. But, Father, the reality is it's not that God will ever stop loving us. It's that eventually we're going to run out of time. 